This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, hello there, hello there, it's Jeff Cutter Dog, and welcome to another Sports Catastrophe Birthday Boy! And the birthday boy for today, December the 5th, is a British icon in a sport you didn't think that Great Britain would be good at, and ski jumping! He's a legend. In 1988, he represented Great Britain in the Olympics in Calgary. Unfortunately, we finished last in the Normal Hill and Large Hill ski jumping competition. He actually had that British ski jumping record for 13 years. And actually has a movie named him, Eddie the Eagle. His name is Michael Edwards. Edwards actually, well, his name Michael, but Eddie was actually a nickname derived by school friends from his surname, Eddie Edwards. After a taste of skiing on a school trip at 13 years old, well, he's 60 years old today, he developed his skills on dry slopes, then worked in Scotland. He would turn from downhill skier to ski jumping because there was no other British ski jumpers to compete for a place for anything. So he decided to begin jumping in New York and all that. He had to wear six pairs of socks to make the boots fit. He was disadvantaged by his weight. He was... Well, he was... 181 pounds or more than 20 pounds heavier than the next heaviest competitor and of course you know the lack of financial support and he was actually very farsighted and would wear thick glasses under his goggles which would mist up at altitude regardless he went to the 1987 world ski jumping championships in Bavaria and was ranked 55th in the world that actually qualified him to be the sole British applicant for the ski jumping at the Winter Olympics. He would he would work as a plasterer and residing in a finished mental hospital because of the lack of funds for all kind of accommodation. That's weird. So anyway, his 71 meter jump in Calgary was a British record uh, for a long time. But anyway, the 1988 Winter Olympics happened and all that. So anyway, the, so the Olympics were in Calgary. Eddie Edwards competed in the 70 and 90 meter events. So ski jumping, you take off from a hill, go down a, a ramp, and then you would fly off the ramp and then try to use your skis for distance and do style points. The farther you land and the better your style points are, the better. So anyway, he would do such a thing in the 70 and 90 meter events. In the 70 meters, he scored 69.2 points. He only had two jumps of 61 meters. Not even making the 70 meter plateau off by nine. The funny thing was, second last was Spain's Bernat, Bernat Soil Pool, and he had 140 points. So not even Edwards, if you doubled his score, would have caught Pool for his second last. Matty Nykinen took home the gold medal with 229 points from two 89.5 meter jumps. In the 90 meters, Eddie would only jump 71 and 67 meters. Not even making the 90 meter plateau. And all that. Third last was Todd Gilman of Canada with 110 points, and he had a 96 meter jump. So that's how bad it was. Nikonen was the 90 meter champion at 224 points from things of 118 and 107 meters. But the press version of the story was embroidered with falsehoods. Eddie the Eagle said, They said I was afraid of heights, but I was doing 60 jams a day then. Yeah, but his lack of success endeared him to people around the globe. He was a media celebrity and was even part of the Tonight Show during the Olympic Games. The press nicknamed him Mr. Magoo, and one Italian journalist called him a ski dropper. But at the closing ceremony, the organizing committee president singled out Edwards for his contribution. He said, you have broken world records and you have established personal best. Some of you have soared like an eagle. So he had widespread attention for his ski jumping, despite the fact that it was not in the best of moods. The only problem was the IOC decided 
in their infinite wisdom to make the entry requirements stricter. The IOC instituted the Eddie the Eagle rule, which meant that Olympic hopefuls will have to compete at international events and be placed in the top 30% or the top 50 competitors, whichever is fewer. So that's kind of awkward and all that. Edwards tried to qualify for the Winter Olympics through that rule, but failed miserably. He did get a sponsorship to qualify for the Nagano Olympics, but never did. Edwards did return to Calgary February 2008 for the 25th anniversary of the ski jumping thing. He actually was chosen as a torchbearer for the real life of the 2010 Vancouver Olympics. Anyway, he released a book called On the Peace, which is what the British call the ski resort, the ski, the ski hill. In 91, he actually recorded a song in Finnish called My Name is Eddie. But he does not speak Finnish. Everett's learned the lyrics fanatically, and actually the song reached number two in the charts. So anyway, he would appear in a number of advertising campaigns and all that. But he would declare bankruptcy in 92, claiming that a trust fund for his earnings was not set up properly. He actually graduated from a Leicester University with a degree in law and all that. So anyway, he was huge. He actually won the celebrity diving program Splash. You know, celebrities would learn how to dive and he won the competition. Anyway, he did a lot of things and all that. So anyway, they made it, there was a biopic chronicling the life story of Edwards. It was planned since 2007, and rumors were that Rupert Grint was going to be an illegal. And it was supposed to be after Grint completed work on the debt. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows movie, but it didn't work. It. But in 2015, 20th Century Fox acquired the film with a pair of people. A Hugh Jackman was going to be in it. All that. Hugh Jackman would actually portray Eddie the Eagle's coach. And Christopher Rock Walken was also there too, playing the coach's mentor. The film was released in early 2016 and got $46 million. In the UK, it was actually the highest grossing film of 2016, of course. There have been many other unbelievable athletes and all that. Even Eric Busenbody, even though that, you know, the Eagle rule happened, he still qualified for the Olympics. So yeah, I kind of felt that the IOC was being too strict on everything saying they didn't want to Eddie the Eagle situation. But that was good for the IOC. That would have been good for the Olympic movement. But it doesn't matter. Eddie the Eagle did compete in the Olympics. And you can't strip that, stripping that from the record. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do 